Welcome everyone, we are back with day two of round one, the Red versus Blue Cyber League 2022 Invitational. Once again, I'm your host, Clint Bodungeon, and we have with us our co-host, Jerry Ogier. What's up? Again, Jerry, long time no see. Yeah, no, it's, it. it you know, it, it was just a few hours ago that we saw hot first round action between uh, Eric Taylor and Josh Mason, the quickest match of the tournament to date. Uh, and even though it was a few hours ago, it does feel like a long period of time has passed. There's so much going on, so much hot action on the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform. I'm loving it. Can't wait for this matchup. Well, I think that the reason why it seems like it was so long ago is because Eric won so fast, it put more time <laughs> between the matches. I got a chance to get a, a manicure and a, and, a, and a hot lunch and, and all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff. You know, took the dog for three walks. So... I'm excited for this. I can't talk. I'm excited for this matchup. So here's what we're looking at today. And get this right. There we go. So we have got Ken Underhill, Ken Bot versus Cyber Matt Lee. And again, you know, from my perspective, um, I don't know, you know, Ken is, is a longtime professional. And, you know, I've known Ken for a long time. I think that, you know, he's probably middle of the road in terms of, of experience with the the platform, with red mm -hmm. versus blue. Uh, I think that he's probably more of a blue teamer. He's got some red team knowledge, but I don't know how much red team skills he has. I've, I haven't seen that side of him. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't matter, right? Because red versus blue, you know, when it comes to methodology, you may have a methodology in your mind as a professional, whether you're a red team or blue teamer, but the mechanics of red versus blue doesn't necessitate whether you have one specialty or the other in order to to kind of dominate as eric you know has shown us eric taylor has shown us so i don't know what are your thoughts on this matchup yeah well eric taylor is a special breed a special uh uh you know candidate who's got both side skills but relative to this matchup you know ken underhill does have uh, significant red team experience and Matt Lee uh, has blue and you know kind of that GRC side of stuff so I do believe cyber Matt Lee will be playing as blue team and Ken as the red so really each team playing to their strengths so I'm hoping a for a good match and then B um, you know I haven't seen either I've seen Matt Lee play he famously got destroyed by Eric Taylor uh, in back-to-back -back games in one single stream another first for Eric Taylor uh, but I haven't seen Ken Underhill play on the platform. He has played, uh, but it hasn't been on stream or in live. So as Eric Taylor would put it, there isn't a there isn't a lot of uh, OSINT out there for Ken Underhill's game. So I'll be interested to see what his style is. We've seen uh, already in the uh, in the match. We've seen uh, my style of going on prem and then jumping back to the hacker hangout. We have seen uh, just earlier today Eric Taylor take advantage of that social engineering. Uh, uh, massive electronic social engineering type attacks uh, to win. So we've seen a couple different techniques and strategies, but there's still other strategies that haven't been explored. So it'd be interesting to see if Ken takes on one of those. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing, right? I mean, there's there's so many different strategies, there's so many different ways, so many different vectors between social engineering and physical uh, direct cyber attacks. So um, let's go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsors while we get the uh, contestants uh, set up. All 
All right, we can see Ken there is uh, waiting in his starship, his spaceship, or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, we there we go. We have Matt Lee starting. Do we know who's blue team and who's red team? I think it looks like Matt is blue team. Oh, I guess Matt Lee is live. Okay, very cool. Yep, very he cool. Is live. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and give them give them the give them the green flag, uh, the green light, and they can get started. Yeah. Um, well, I want I, I want Ken to go full screen here. Um, you know, we do have a couple uh, a couple production things here, uh, but I'll let them know that they can go uh, go live. Yeah, there we go. He's starting to get his thing stood up. There we go. All right. So if you're in chat, if you've been following the um, matches throughout the event, I know I recognize some of you, Just Ben, Justin Loken, Munchkin, uh, a lot of the Simply Cyber crowd up in here. Hi, Michael Crean, Jermaine Wilson. If you've been following, please let me know in chat what you're thinking um, as far as um, who might win today. Yeah, you let know, get... from my perspective... Uh... Let's see here. From yeah, for, we're just getting the the getting everybody set up. Oh, <laughs> see Matt moving around his picture there. And also, just one thing, you know, even though uh, our competitors are experienced streamers, uh, they might not be experienced with reach uh, with restream in particular. So we're just getting them set up real quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Matt Lee looks like he's in a cubicle. Very nice. He's giving the wave. I like it. I like it. Ken is uh, just getting set up here. There is Ken. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. I think we're ready. Yes. All right. So now you can flip over to Ken just to confirm we've got that from a production perspective. Uh, Clint and yep. See, here we go. Awesome. Multiplayer. All right. Yeah, so I've seen Ken practicing a lot uh, on the server using the power of the server admin omnipotence. Uh, but uh, I don't know if he's actually played any live human versus human. I think that might be why he's having an issue getting set up on multiplayer here. He's inexperienced with doing so. Yep. There we go. What is he doing there? Nope, nope, nope. All right. Ken, I mean, uh, Clint, do you want to talk about some of the meta stuff that you talked about in round two, potentially? Um, I mean, there's nothing really to mention. Yeah, there he is. He's getting set up now. Uh, there's there's nothing really to talk about yet. Um, I don't okay. want to disclose that until later. We, which Okay, here we go. Looks All right, like perfect. I see that. All right, we, we are go. now ready to rock. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, Cyber Matt Lee, you can start the game. All right, I am super excited. The, every match we've had uh, to date has been wildly entertaining. I have absolutely loved it, and uh, I'm really hoping for this one to be as equally exciting as all of the matches to date really have been. Oh, and he's got the pipeline map. This is the the map. This is the medium map. He's going with his policies and procedures, getting his baseline set up. But um, and I can also tell that Ken is already queuing up his stuff. Yep, he didn't waste any time there. Nope, um, I'm not gonna. At all. Yeah, I'll be asking the um, the the players to show their um, activity logs so we can get some better uh, visibility on all of that. Oh, he already pushed over. Wait, there we go. All righty. Um... All right, I've got chat up. I've got them up. <laughs> I've got all these feeds up. I am maxing out my two screens, uh, Clint. So very excited about that. All right. I have limited screens right now because I'm in a temporary studio. So okay, it's very cumbersome. good. All righty. So um, I think Ken is getting ready to make an on-site run. He's got the human social engineering researched. All right. Yeah, he's moving right to perimeter, there and he goes. Uh, he's doing some more research. See, I you know. I, I, appre <laughs> I, I appreciate this. Ken's going to make a run. He's He is researching the right things. Uh, but, I, I, you know, I would really encourage someone to go a little bit deeper. It'll be interesting to see. Um, 
what Ken can accomplish with not having a ton of human social engineering uh, researched. You know, well, he, yeah, and he and he's going to be doing that. He is he's pumping that up. And but I, you know, I don't know if Ken under Ken, I don't know if he knows that the. Uh, that the HMI cheese has been nerfed. Um, let Matt know to hit his minus uh, key on his keyboard to adjust his resolution for his Mac OS. I will. All right, what else is Ken doing here? Um, he is currently remote. He's moving into the plant using physical, I think. Yep, he's gonna use physical intrusion methods to move further into the plant. All right. Wow. So he is aggro. You know, it's interesting. Cyber Matt Lee has developed um, video surveillance. So he Already. has early defense in place. Uh oh, um, Yep, he's already he's he's even got some um, some network. Oh, Lee, see, look at that has been kicked out already. He was on wow. the perimeter. He was on the perimeter. He Matt Lee has video surveillance and it paid off. Boom, Ken is kicked out. His initial strategy has been thwarted. Yep, yep. And we're going to have to see because Ken spent a lot of resources on developing that human SE. So it will be, it'll be really interesting to see what, what he can do with that. <laughs> he's going to be, he's persistent. Yep. I'm also going to ask Cyber Ken to close that, uh, Yeah, so he's using a spear phishing attack as a secondary as a secondary means. That's a pretty solid move. If he's done human SE, right? Uh, human SE does not affect spear phishing. Oh, that's electronic, electronic SE yeah, only. Yeah, electronic SE only. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he. So he's got, yeah. He's got the spear phishing going. I will say he's lucky that he got kicked out and not arrested. You could get arrested, and that is a three resource penalty for three turns. It's very devastating in the early game for red team. Yeah, it really is. All right. So he's done electronic SE now. So he's bumping that up. So he he's, he's to... really going to social engineering. He's bumping, he's bumped up his, his human SE. He's, he's bumping up his electronic SE. Oh, wow. Yeah. So man has his network segmented. Yeah, he must be having issues with his minus key uh, resetting his... Uh, it, it's fine. We can see everything. It's just fine. Um, I just thought it might be easier for him to mm -hmm. see. All right. So, and he's doing his ICS safe testing methods, which means he's getting ready to do a vulnerability assessment. He is wasting no time in getting his basic blocking and tackling, some rudimentary monitoring set up, and he's going for his assessments. He's going to start hardening, uh, hardening pretty fast. Ken has done yeah, you know, game. you know, it's crazy. These guys, they 60 second turns, but both guys are playing like 10 to 15 second moves. Like this is an incredibly fast game. It's like speed chess. Yeah, yeah. Man, he is bumping up the social engineering skills. Oh yeah. He's got his safe testing method. He's gonna start doing vulnerability assessments now. He's got his asset inventory completed. Man, he is moving. Yeah, both guys are moving. I like this map. I think it's big enough for some interesting stuff to go on, but not so large that blue team yeah, this is, is kind the, of at, at a loss. This is the pipeline map. It's uh, it's typically considered to be the medium sized map. The manufacturing is the small map, and mm -hmm. the large oil and gas is the large map. Ken's doing some service enumeration on those devices. He's about to find out he doesn't have enough resources to do this. He's going to be disappointed when he finds that out. Um, I do find it interesting. Um, he's bumping all these things up, but he is trying to do some research on um, on what these assets are that he has access to, probably so he can start poking and prodding them. I, yeah. Ken, this is uh, just one of those indicators that Ken isn't super familiar with the game. Uh, he's only got one asset left and research takes two. So he'd have to either pull back one of his service enumerations to free up a resource and do the research, research or do the service enumeration. If it were me, I would have um, pulled back a service enumeration simply because I am all about maximum resource utilization. That's my bag. <laughs> all right. So he's got some uh, assets identified with port scans and service scan. Service scan is those blue. Yeah, he doesn't realize uh, he doesn't have his vulnerabilities yet. He's clicked on the shield. 
Yeah, I think Ken is probably one of the most least experienced with the games. But between Ken, I don't know, Ken, Stacy, and and David, David. Meese were probably yeah. They, those are the most inexperienced with the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I but the difference between Ken and then the other two is that while he's inexperienced with the game, he's got a lot more cybersecurity experience. Yes, this is true. So it looks like Cyber Matt Lee is focusing. He's looking at his OT infrastructure and trying to decide what he wants to do. He's installing antivirus there. Um, he is very limited on resources. Only three analysts on the blue side to do all of the work. So very much like reality, right? Um, where yep. you're, um, you know, trying to make ends meet. Now, Clint, question for you. He's got an outdated firmware attack on here. You don't research outdated firmware. You just attack it. So yeah. what? how's the chances of Ken uh, pulling this attack off if he decided to move forward with it? Well, I guess he's not, but... Yeah, I mean, so there's really nothing that defends against... There's, there's, there's certain vulnerabilities and certain attacks that the blue team has that can buff against attacks for certain vulnerabilities and outdated firmware is not one of those so he would have a decent chance of exploiting the outdated firmware come on ken oh here we go he is going to attack it. He he's going for the outdated firmware attack this would be a front door hit you definitely in my opinion you don't want to do denial of service on a gateway firewall yeah it's all not about yet unless you're trying to do so like an, an emergency last minute pnl victory or something yeah exactly back on the blue side here Cyber Matt Lee's trying to uh, figure it out. He can't hire new staff. He's way underfunded for that. He's doing um, system hardening. Doesn't cost any money. System patches doesn't cost money. It just costs people. He's gone ahead and passed the turn. Ken's attack looks like it failed. Yep, yep. So He's doing electronic SC again, so... I guess Ken's thinking since he can't really penetrate the uh, hard candy shell of this organization, he's going to try to have someone take uh, inside the, the gooey soft center open an email for him. Eminem security. Mm hmm. A jelly donut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's got his vulnerability assessment. He's going to start hardening. He's, he's changing default credentials on his devices. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, I think that wasting resources on hardening and and, and, and patching network devices, uh, like specifically switches, is a waste of resources because hardly anybody focuses on switches. Although yeah. there's a little known effect with a switch is that if you do compromise a switch, you get visibility of all the devices connected to it. Yep, that is, that is interesting. But like, you know, endpoint security... Uh, zero trust architecture, um, you know, putting the EDR, you know, if I do play blue, I'll tell you, I liked Eric uh, Taylor's strategy when he played me many moons ago of, you know, one of the very first things he did was like EDR on everything. He yeah. wanted visibility. And I, I found that to be a pretty useful approach. Um, now, Clint, let me ask you this. Log analysis uh, action versus EDR. Do you need both of them for your SIM to find things? Or no. is it what, what what's the so difference? Your um, EDR is specific to your computers, your PCs, mm -hmm. and um, log analysis is specific to network devices. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, very good. So, yeah, another strategy that I haven't seen anybody use yet. Uh, maybe I'll keep it quiet. I don't know, but uh, I think it'd be interesting to see, which is. I'll tell them. Yeah, so an interesting strategy would be to deploy threat monitoring really fast. Get it out as fast as you can on everything. Mm -hmm. Let the red team in um, using what I call the bastard operator from hell. Actually, it's from Alex Goodwin. The bastard operator from hell strategy. Let the red team in. And then every time you detect something, get that threat intelligence, do forensics, get that threat intelligence and go for a relatively quick threat intelligence victory by just letting them in the front door and just picking them off. Oh, very nice. Kind of the uh, um, like a like a rat trap almost. Right. Exactly. All right. Looks like. Uh, oh, Ken did 
uh, find the recruit hackers button, and he is uh, almost done with that. Turn two of three right now. So once he gets those hackers, he will be able to do more. When we when we yep. look at Ken's uh, team uh, screen, he is in desperate need of some help. So uh, Cyber Matt Lee is yep. feeling the burden of a CISO life. All right, he got new hackers. He's got the hackers. Has... He's got yep, got those resources. He definitely needs something because he doesn't really have anything going at this time. Yeah, turn seventeen with two remote users and a gateway firewall. That's that's very much, you know, you could see that from turn two, uh, with a yep. you know OSIN and then host scan from the internet. So let's see what he's doing. Yeah, Matt's just going nuts on the hardening systems. I mean, he's really got his stuff together. I've watched Matt play a few rounds online when he was streaming, and um, he's actually, even for a beginner to the game, Matt is really good at this game. I mean, for being a beginner, he's really good at this game. Yeah. Now, I will say, so here, you just saw where he freed up a resource to allocate it to something else. That's the technique I was talking about earlier. Yep, yep. I will say um, one thing that you are able to do in the game. This game is so good about being realistic. But one thing that this game does that is unrealistic <laughs> is the ability to go patch, 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 patch. Uh, yeah. You don't really have to deal with IT. You don't have to request. You don't have to get downtime windows and all that. Nobody pushes back. I don't have sysadmins complaining about agents on their boxes. It's on the way, though. It's on the roadmap. Oh, my God. That's like a DLC pack. Like the, uh, yeah, the yeah. It comes with like uh, a jar of aspirin and a, a bottle of Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, it's on the way, though. Yeah, the ability to do zone patching and the ability to have these random injects um where you know you get pushed back from it or somebody's out sick that is on the roadmap oh my god that's really awesome all right so what do uh, you have oh he's got oh he's got one oh as a remote user that's kind of tough okay. luck uh it's all right he should still i don't know if i was ken I, you know he invested all that into the electronic se i would go for another social engineering attack go for a spearfish spearfishes to me are pretty expensive so when they don't hit it's yeah. pretty tough but Start uh he, campaign engine he is harvesting credentials so maybe he'll try to do a password attack on uh the firewall i'm not sure what the gateway firewall currently looks like by uh cyber matt lee He's requesting budget here so yeah i think what ken's gonna find out is that uh you know while the computer ai um, is a worthy opponent in many cases playing against a human opponent is much more challenging oh my god yeah unless it's oh, got budget all right budget acquired my friend yeah. matt is rolling he needed the budget too yeah oh yeah you know i'll tell you what oh jesus he just went he went full ham on this one he has requested staff the 45 th dude i feel like that action button had a thick layer of dust on it he had to be like <laughs> yeah before he clicked on that button i we'll see and i'll so tell he's you got what, ransomware installed on that remote user but i don't think that's going to help him much well if matt lee is not experienced it's possible he gets distracted and there you activates go IR. there you go exfiltrate the data don't activate the ransomware yet so now i, I like his strategy here he's uh -oh. going to do some things to affect the pnl without letting him know exactly where he's at and i don't know if matt has edr on that remote user i don't know either but he actually backed out the attack uh clint he backed out the exfiltrate data he oh. still has two he still has two resources which is what it costs to do it so yeah, see, no, see, Matt does not have EDR on either one of his remote users, so he doesn't know he's been compromised. Oh, my God. It's too bad. Ken left two resources on the table, 18 seconds of time, and he didn't yeah. exfiltrate the data. What a, that what was a, a, that's a, play a mistake. misstep. Yeah, yeah, that was a play mistake. Looks like Ken's gone on site. He's at yep, the, he's in the, the parking but lot. He, but again, he, he, he's on site, but did not create a malicious USB for a drop. So unless he plans on digging deeper into site, um, finding HMIs, looking, doing physical recon to find devices and plant Trojans, he's kind of fumbling around a little bit. Yeah, his electronic SE is maxed out. I would be crafting really well-written spearfishes right now and just launching them, opening uh, a campaign. Now, Clay. So okay, so he's, mo he's moving into the plant using social engineering, and he's got a very high human SE skill rating right now, so he does have a chance there. What were you going to say? Think 
Well, I was going to say, uh, of the three campaigns that you can do, fishing, watering hole, et cetera, each, they cost different values. Uh, does the higher the value one have a higher chance of hitting or hitting yeah, a, a more? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that makes sense. Um, you know, it is a little early for Ken to be panicking. He has successfully entered the plant. Okay. Uh, this is this is good for Ken. Now he needs to be careful here. He so his high electron, his high human SE rating is going to counter the effects of the surveillance. But he needs. Yeah, he's searching for HMI. He's going for HMI cheese. He is that searching HMI and he is searching for devices as well. Yeah. So the eight searching for HMIs that has been. That has been nerfed a little bit, but it's not impossible. But it does take two turns to achieve now. So, well, Clint, let me ask you this: If Ken finds some devices with his little uh, physical recon, can he plant Trojans on those devices and have persistence? Yeah, yeah, he can. And um, and and but not only that, he can what he could plant a rogue device right now if he wants to. Mm. But that rogue device is uh, only going to be good to the zone that he's in. So. So what have you, and look at that. Oh, did he get an HMI? He did not. Well, he doesn't know yet, right? Yeah. Well, no, if you get an HMI, you'll know it's an HMI. Um, it couldn't so be did... like an embedded device and you have to scan No, it. but he found the, but. Dude, if I was on the plant, I would not be researching. Those I do embedded not... devices is, is a, one of them is a PLC, at least there are two of them. So, but. Oh, uh, see, this is the HMI nerf, dude. This is this is it. It's something as simple as adding one more turn, dynamically changed the game for the HMI cheese runs. Yep, yep. So it looks like he's it balanced he's still, it out, but he's still on site. He's still he's still good to go. Now Cyber Matt Lee does have uh, video surveillance on site. So yep. However, Ken has a really good human social engineering rating, which really kind of cancels out some of Ooh. the. It cancels out some of the 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 defense of the video surveillance. Oh, Ken, you have two resources. Yeah, in yeah, seconds, he's man. not Why? utilizing Why? his resources, and he just got booted. Gosh, for some, he doesn't know it yet, but he will find out soon, dude. I am so hardcore insane about resource utilization, and watching Ken is it, it's it's nails on a chalkboard for me. Let's find out. He's been arrested. He yep. is laughing. He is laughing to himself. He's in a jail cell. His yep. HMI now search is obviously going to fail. At least he still has that foothold. It is a... Um, oops. I, I wish he had installed a, um, a Trojan. He could have done it with those two resources. Sorry about that, guys. About the, uh, the, the blackout. That's all right. All right. I'll just commentate Cyber Matt Lee's turn. Uh, it looks like he's looking at the uh, data historian and still cleaning up. He's doing patches on the engineering workstation. He's focused go. all up in that OT management space, um, that dark brown corner. He's flipped it to red. All right. Yep. Our good friend Ken is doing 20 to life. <laughs> but, but, he's, you know, but, but he's still got four resources, even with the three down being in jail. Um, you, know, you can't, can't go to the he... you can't go to the perimeter for jail, can you? Last I checked. Well, it let yeah. him cue that he, up. He, I think you can because you have multiple resources and he's recruited hackers, which I don't think that's not the determining factor. But we'll see. Well, I know, but if you're physically in jail, how can you walk to the perimeter? That's yeah. I, I here's the thing. I think I don't know if you. Sh I don't. I, I I think it's just gonna fail. Um, you shouldn't be able to queue it up. That that might be one of the bug fixes. Let's see. I can't tell. He did. Oh, so even though he's got one, he's got people in jail. Yeah, he he was still allowed to go on the perimeter because he's got he's got people. Interesting. Did not know that. Hey, learn something new every day. I love it. I love it. All right, so he's, I mean, he's hes making a run for it. I find this interesting. He's basically stacking being in jail because if he goes to jail again, like, I wonder how the timer will work. He, this is, this is, this he's, is territory that I'm not even familiar with as a, a creator of the game. Oh my God, Ken, please install a Trojan. I, he's missing, he's missing. Oh, yeah. oh, all right. 
So it's a good match. Guys, we're on turn 30 of 50. We're in the mid game at this point. Matt Lee is uh, putting together quite a strong performance. A bit, of, I would argue, a bit of an unorthodox uh, flip to blue. A bit, a bit of an unorthodox gameplay strategy. Um, you yeah. know what? I would, I would argue, Matt Lee's approach to this game is what it looks like when you have a seasoned 20 year IT person who's been put in charge of cybersecurity. There's nothing wrong with it, but they just. They, they work at like the tactical level. There's no yeah. strategic framework vision pushing down. And, and you know, that's kind of what I'm seeing here. Love it. So Clint's, uh, Ken's He's searching for HMIs again, and yep. that's good. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what happen if, happens if he gets arrested again. I mean, you can go negative resources uh, when you start getting arrested. It will be interesting too, if he's able to detonate an HMI <laughs> while in jail, that could be a first. <laughs> We're just going to have a new strategy name. Yeah, right? So, you know, you can look at the little yellow shield with the red exclamation point are vulnerabilities. So you can see that um, Cyber Matt Lee it has some vulnerabilities still, but many of his uh, OT stuff has been cleaned up. What are we going to do? A password attack? He, he did uh, harvest credentials at one point. He doesn't know any yeah. vulnerabilities for that, so maybe he's going to have to do some research. Find vulnerabilities. There he goes. Pretty solid move. It's a one-turn, one-resource move to find vulnerabilities. That'll find public vulnerabilities, but those are yep. those are fine. Those are fine. So, Clint, uh, Matt Lee's wor working on installing physical 2FA. What does that do in context of the game? Um, it's going to make it very difficult to break electronic locks. Okay. So, but that, I mean, Ken hasn't been utilizing electronic entry, so uh, it, Matt doesn't know it, but it's kind of a wasted move. Mm-hmm. All right. He's got his physical 2FA, log analysis. He still hasn't really done much with his AD server or his uh, SIM server, that Elk server in the bottom left corner there. Yeah, but then, you know, he's doing the right thing. He's 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 really sort of, he's focusing on his process control network and, um, you know, in game here, that's the right thing to do because, I mean, quite frankly, other than maybe some, um, some data pilfering and credential pilfering value or PNL value, um, Mm -hmm. the the overall value I, I would say that the server zone is a bit of a red herring uh, if you're there's really not a lot of value there except for a couple you know there's there's a lot of pnl value there but yep. i mean the, the 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 control systems are your crown jewels but they're also the hardest to get to yeah but i, I feel like a ransomware ad server is pretty good or uh, we even saw in a friendly exhibition match I had against uh, Matt Lee, I believe, uh, I compromised the SIM server and they lost total visibility across all their entire network. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you if you compromise the SIM, um, there's a, a strategy there for stealth for sure. But um, but yeah, other than that, the server zone is primarily a PNL haven. I mean, that's as for mm. the red team. You know, you want to. You you attack the server zone and the production zones for PL victories. So it looks like Ken's got visibility on a lot of uh, assets. He's starting to enumerate them. He does have all of these massive amounts of resources. So he's doing spear fishing. Please don't pass the turn, Ken, with three three people on the bench. More electronic SE. This dude is going to push it past a hundred percent. Yeah, not possible, but. He's wasting, <laughs> he's wasting uh, resources on continued research with diminishing returns. Yep. So Matt Lee's uh, considering security skills training. He decides to go with it. He did successfully get that fourth asset. Um, I can't tell how much money yeah. he has right now. 24,000. So he must have got yeah. another, another budget request or awarded some money because. Uh, yeah, I think he got the $10,000 budget defender bonus. Hmm. I like it. I mean, you know, you said that, you know, he he pretty much acts like a 
uh, an IT person removing mm -hmm. tactically or whatever, but it's systematic and it's methodical, right? And it's paying off against, you know, Ken here. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, I, I think that you can move tactically with a spread out approach like this if the red team doesn't really have a methodical approach, a, a really sound strategy, know what they're doing. But somebody with a more advanced play set uh, experience and in, in, in a strategy, it, it, you can't use such a spread out approach. You're going to have to be more strategic and you're going to have to be ready to pivot quickly. Yeah, well, uh, Matt's really hard. He might, I, I don't know if he can do this in 50 turns, but the uh, all clear win condition we don't see the all it clear can win. Be, it can be done uh, our beta testers have pulled it off we don't see the all clear win condition very often but for those in chat who aren't familiar with it there is a situation where the blue team can win before the 50th turn if they remediate all vulnerabilities yeah. in the environment it's, it's yeah a, it's a hard one to achieve yeah but... and that's why we don't really even talk about it here in the competition because it's so rare but i mean oh man if if he pulled off an all clear victory during competition that would be epic but he's gonna have to do pen testing to pull that off because and there's a very specific strategy of combinations you have to pull off using vulnerability assessments and pen testing in concert uh to be able to find those zero days and you can't have the red team in your network. So he has to, uh-oh, look at there. Wow. wow, how did he hit that? I think he got lucky on the engineering workstation. Oh, with no, a... no, he did that Spearfish campaign. Yeah. He's got, he's on electronic SD. To... He's got an engineering workstation. Kent, he's got seven resources. You need to damage the ICS right now. Do you... Now, now let me ask you this. Like, what's the, what, Ken, what are you thinking about? Yes. What's There's that? no way to protect from this, right? You got to eliminate the threat. I mean, you, no, you, I know he, that. But so he, he knows he, it. See, he said the only way to protect against this is to immediately replace that asset. Go, and he has a turn delay, a one turn delay to get into IR mode to do that. If Ken gets lucky, if Ken gets lucky on this ice damage ICS strike, he will have pulled up, pulled out a massive upset here. Yes, it will be a massive upset. Ken does not, I mean, Matt Lee does not look like he's like interested in activating IR. He's activated IR. He's got three resources. Definitely need to use them. That's Matt's inexperience. If Matt, God, he, he's focused on user land right now. Matt's inexperience with the game and with OT is going to hurt him right now because uh. there it is. Boom. Yep. And there it is. Oh, what an upset because Matt didn't understand that the engineering workstation is the true keys to the kingdom. Wow. Wow. What an unexpected victory. Wow. Red, Red Slow team wins start. again. Slow start with another lucky spearfishing strike. The last two games have been won with lucky spearfishing strikes. Absolutely. Now, I would um, say that Eric's was lucky, but it was also systematic. But Ken did, to be fair, Ken started off with the same strategy that Eric was using. Or he wow. least pivoted to that. Wow. I, I got to say, another exciting match. Matt Lee was doing the right things. Ken was kind of all over the place. Uh, but damn, uh, definitely worked. Uh, unfortunately, Matt did have an opportunity there to intervene on that compromised engineering workstation and either uh, disconnected from the network, which would have worked, right, uh, Clint? Yeah. Or, or replace it. Let's get them over to the uh, server. Yeah, I'll invite them right now. Oh, you I see what you're doing. Okay, you're doing it. This is ThreatGen Red versus Blue. It's on go to threatgen.com for more information on the game itself. What a match. What a match. Yeah. Ken Ken wins. Ken takes the W. I um I got to say you know, red is winning three out, three out of four uh, in the um, in the competition right now. So, yeah. All right, let's get these guys on here. Yep. Ken. So, man, oh man, oh man, guys, good game. Let me tell you. Yeah, I know, I know, Matt. Let me tell you something, guys. <laughs> so, and I'm just gonna say this before we get into your strategies and and, and talk about that. Let me just tell you that, Matt. You were doing a fantastic job. You were methodical. You were systematic. You were putting up, you know, you were the the, the Pittsburgh Steelers Iron Curtain defense. And <laughs> yeah, man. it was, I mean, of the 70s. And it was amazing. It was a thing of beauty. And 
uh, you you thwarted a couple of Ken's initial early strategies, but he stayed persistent. Um, no pun intended with that that electronic social engineering, and he kept the spear yeah. fishing going. And in the end, he ended up landing a lucky strike. I mean, the, the luckiest strike that you can land in the game is a spear fishing attack or a USB strike on the engineering workstation. And I was telling uh, Jerry that I you didn't look too urgent about that engineering workstation getting popped because the way yeah. that why you're moving around and things like that then i said it's probably your inexperience with the game combined with maybe some inexperience with ot to understand that engineering workstation is the keys to the kingdom and has direct access to the plcs so yeah yeah talk to me talk to me matt a little bit about you know your strategy there it was pretty apparent but i'm really curious about what your reaction to when you saw that engineering workstation getting popped no, I think you you hit the nail on the head. I, I knew that, at least in my last, I played a bunch of games yesterday. I've been pl practicing the last couple of weeks, and it really kind of comes down to that there are particular assets that in the map don't tie directly to their, their value and risk, right? And what I mean by that is if you look at the engineering workstation, it's placed in a different subnet. Mm -hmm. It has, you know, no logical view to connect to those other assets. But you don't see the serial cable laying on the floor that runs straight to the PLCs that literally is touching the PLCs as a direct yep, yep. response. And so I would say there is some graphical layout that would have that would have changed that if you placed that engineering workstation physically connected to those PLCs so that people had the direct correlation. But ultimately, I, I think I saw it the first time it popped up and was going into incident response. But you're right. I would not have had direct in my mind correlation to it being uninspected all the way to the plc if i can just gain a foothold on that workstation not not by the graphics and certainly um as i think about it it's quite accurate right i have the machine sitting right in front of the plcs for those five axis controllers right like i know that it just doesn't stick in my head and so i didn't think of the asset more valuable than the assets below it uh anyways yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, Ken, um, what was your initial strategy? And it looked like that you kind of thought about pivoting and then you went back. Like, talk talk us through, you know, your, all that. Yeah, so initial strategy was let me get in physically and, and get yep. there the fastest once uh, once I got arrested the first time because I think I got it two or three times. <laughs> it was twice. I was got arrested twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but first time I got arrested, I was like, okay, let me pivot to more of the electronic social engineering and, and focus on both phishing, and email phishing, and spear phishing attacks. And then uh, I did that for a bit, started just doing the traditional route through things. And then I, I thought in my head, I was like, well, he's going to be focused on that now. Let me try again to get back on the physical side. And, and then, of course, I got arrested again and then uh, came back to it. And yeah, like you said, Clint, that was a pretty uh, lucky strike to uh, to get that engineer. <laughs> yeah. Workstation. So hey, let go ahead, Matt. If you watch it, too, whenever I saw the workstation pop up and I saw my unpatched vulnerability on the PLC, I'm like, oh, it's over. Like, it's uh -huh. over. He's, he's trained on, he's going to be trained on this, uh, you know, this type of attack mechanism. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So this, this, I mean, the time was almost, almost identical uh, down to like three or four minutes uh, from this morning's match. Um, this, the ending of this match felt a lot like the ending to this morning's match with Eric, uh, with uh, Eric Taylor in that. Uh, he he did kind of the same thing, but his strike wasn't on the engineering workstation. Uh, however, the difference in these two—no offense, Ken—but because your strategy was kind of back and forth and went different. Here's what it felt like to me: Eric Taylor's strategic approach was a Navy SEAL team strategically and methodically entering an adversary's stronghold and taking them out it, as intended. Ken. You were a burglar in the night, rattling doors and windows, <laughs> walking around the house, looking for a way in, and happened to find a broken window with the door open next to it. Hey, um, you know, and, when you, and, and, hey, and, and walk right you, in. Yeah, when you get the jewels, you get the jewels. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just like a Fast and Furious movie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, win, a win's a win. Doesn't matter yeah. if it's by an <laughs> Exactly. Or a exactly. No, I well, it didn't mean any offense to you with saying that. Oh, no. Actually, your well, strategy no. Was you said maybe. I immediately was like, thank goodness he said maybe. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I take no offense to that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, like, you know, the difference between, you know, I come from the Air Force. We call it the chair force. You're the Navy. You're more like the floaty force, right? You know, the, 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 the chair floating on the water, right? So <laughs> oh. it's. <laughs> 
Aren't they the Marines' taxi? I thought that's what the Navy. So was. is the Air Force. We're well, the we're hey. the Airbus for the Marines. And the, well, yeah, you know. yeah, guys, I was I was Army, so I I was a guy that. Oh, that's oh, I thought you were Navy. All the Air Force mess. Uh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I thought. I'm sorry, Ken. I thought you were in. You, know, you were Army. Okay. Well, either way, you know what? Hey, thanks to all our service members. No offense to anybody, but but uh, I like to pick on myself. So, um, Matt, any um, any thoughts on you know what would you uh, other than the obvious? Uh, would you have done anything different, or do you think that you had a pretty solid play? You know, I, you never know with this. I think there's enough game theory that I'm a bit missing that that would come into play here. That that's this maybe the learned trait. But from a, a practical, harden the assets, harden the assets more that have more impact to you, right? Deal with those. In fact, other than the fact that I did not realize that this machine had one-to-one -one access, I thought it would be a pivot that had to then gain access to those PLCs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have changed that and hardened those assets first instead of the PLCs themselves um, yeah. a little more. But other than that, it's, it's the strategy of I've got to get the policy. I've got to get the executive team into giving me enough funding to have the budget to have another human and then build access and get more and more ramped up on these. And I think had I gotten another four or five turns, I think that actually would have been even harder to have come across because I would have had EDR rollout complete. I would have had the yeah, USB yeah. protection more protected. So I'm good with my strategy on this one. I think I learned a lot from the last time uh, in at yeah. least some of the base layers that need to exist. So. Well, you know, to your point, you know, you said earlier, you know, there were some visual things that could have helped and everything like that. You know, and it's a simulation. It's not a perfect fidelity to real life. Um, you know, but you know, there it's are a great things. training tool though, for sure. But we're but we're we are we are improving it, right? And there are things that we have on the roadmap to to, to help. You know, and that's one of the reasons why we like to have these tournaments and we like uh, to watch players play is because you know situations like this is like, oh, that's a great idea. We could actually kind of improve the visibility or the knowledge that that workstation is connected to these PL. LCs yeah. and improve yeah. that a little bit so you know all these things help and, and it the 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 development of the simulation is a, is going to be an ongoing process as is this league and hopefully hopefully yeah. we just get this moving in the and all in in a you know very fast direction moving forward uh to where it serves its purpose which is like everybody learn and for anybody not following that delineation if you looked at it the way the map looks saying hey the plcs are down here then if I'm on a machine over here, I only just have one less firewall between me and it, but I still have to communicate with it to make it happen. But when you are talking about PLCs, and when you are talking about these logic controllers, they're usually serial. They're usually connected to that machine. They used in a to way be. Directly can be man man manipulated, right? They used to be. Now, though, uh, for at least a, a, you know, a couple decades now, um, they've been converging with TCP IP protocols sure. and even more so now. And so that's the reason why they're conveyed the way they are on the large oil and gas map where you have a uh, serial radio connectors. They're right actually, there. Yeah. yeah and then there is a, in, in fact, in the, in the new versions, uh, uh, updates of the game coming out, you'll see a dotted line that represents the serial. Nice. Connections. And so, cool. um, so, but yeah, nowadays, uh, a lot of PLCs are connected via TCP IP. Uh, and so that's just makes sense. The reality of a of a of a converging architecture uh, with two too many operators dismay. So anyway, uh, Ken, anything? I mean, you you did pull off the the win there, but uh, we noticed that uh, you know there were a lot of uh, resources left sitting on the bench um, to, to Jerry's dismay, and then. Yeah, you know, I, I, have, are... I have an unusual, like, it's probably neurotic. I, I have an unusual, um, like, le disposition of, of anger and disgust uh, for, for misused resource or for not full resource utilization. Well, like, you saw I, my one. <laughs> yeah, when, when I play, if I get under, like, a 97% resource utilization, it's, it's, like, the worst day ever. Like, I'm just going to bed after that. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, so, I mean, is there anything you would have done, uh, you know, differently? What, what, you know, what, what would you have done or what will you do next time to improve your, your play if you want to reveal that? Well, I don't think I'll reveal what I'll do next time. <laughs> I, do, I just think that I would probably focus a little more on the electronic route, especially around the spear fishing. Not saying I'll do that next time, but I think that, you know, I, I, I did see that one with uh, Matt and Eric. So I was actually, I think it was Matt and Eric where Eric uh, jumped in physically 
So I was like, well, I think Matt will probably defend against this, but let me just see if that's a quick win or not. So and I think he I did. He jumped out with that surveillance really quick. But the yeah. fact that you had your human SE so high, it, it yeah. just dampened the effects of surveillance somewhat. Yeah, yep. and so, I, you know, that, that part, you know, uh, spiking those up on, on both the electronic and human SE, I wouldn't change that one bit. I think that's an important part of things. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I you know, jumping around, just adapting to, to what the – the other team was doing and i think that you know that simulates real life of maybe your non your non nation state level attacker coming in that they're gonna yeah. say oops crap i can't get this machine now let me pivot over here try this route right. so well you know i hope hopefully uh matt I, you know you've been I've, I've watched a few of your streams remember and, and and so i was there on a couple of your very first streams ever under my my alter ego on my, my uh, one w with eric taylor right yeah, uh, the, yeah. the first game the 75 round w as a, as a matter of fact actually, that was too. that was nice yeah and but i'm even going further back i was watching you practicing on your channel yep. uh i was there under my arcades and indies alter ego uh, yep. and trying trying to help you out and give you advice and it was very and so helpful and so i've seen you a few times playing and everything like that and and you know even though that um you're gone from this tournament now you're now eliminated uh i really hope to see you back in future tournaments in in league I play will be. uh because you are a fierce competitor and you add value uh to everything that we're doing here so thank you very much so um appreciate y'all any hey, go beat him then yeah any my final, final thought is go whip taylor's butt <laughs> like it's his turn <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be I'll be really curious to see. So Ken played as red and Eric played as red. Um, they both can't be red, obviously. No. So they'll either have to be a gentleman's agreement or the coin flip, which is uh, you know random and, and fair. Uh, so it'll be curious to see which one will be red, which one will be blue, uh, and you know how that shakes out. You know, Eric Taylor does boast that he is great at both sides. So he does. He does. We should test that. Yeah. If I was being be. given the coin flip, I would say Eric Taylor's going to be on blue, personally. You know, and All give right. Ken a chance to improve on his strategy. Yeah. But uh, so we will have those uh, those matches posted at some point tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're going and maybe maybe first thing in well, well, well so I can, I can tell you the next match. I can tell you the next match. So so the, like, so the next what? match will be Stacy Loki versus myself. Tomorrow, Wednesday, September 21st at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Standard Okay, so you time. have decided that it is in the afternoon. And then... Yep. And I will be uh, red team and she will be blue team. Yeah, now, so we had to flex. Ken and Eric will play next. Uh, and we had to flex that from tomorrow to Thursday due to a, con a scheduling conflict uh, with Eric. So... The, the 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 next match will be we'll post that tonight um and 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 get all that up tomorrow uh morning so the what are you posting there <clears throat> okay so it's 12 p.m eastern on thursday is when it is yeah ken and eric okay. yeah okay well we'll get it all posted <laughs> yeah look, look look to social media it'll be out there you know we've got the same look and feel for all the play cards for all of the promo material so you'll know it uh, when it's coming, but round two action, uh, first game tomorrow on Wednesday, the second game on Thursday, and then the finals on Friday. It's a pretty, pretty epic week of activity and competition, and so far it proved to be a really uh, well-received, well-fought, and in some situations surprising uh, round one. Yeah, and we do have, since I, I let the cat out of the bag earlier, and then and, um, Jerry asked me to kind of talk a little bit about it earlier. Um, We've got a small twist coming for round two, so we're gonna we're gonna switch up some of the meta numbers uh, for round two a little bit. Uh, we're gonna make it a little easier to do stealth on the red team. Um, we're probably going to do something with the resources a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kick up a twist for the uh, round two, and then I have something working special for the finals not going to release it yet but we have a very special little twist coming for the finals, so you got to stay tuned for that so all right on that note thank you very much to the audience for joining us thanks to competitors this was a great match um ken thank you very much matt thank you very much jerry thanks for joining me and we will catch everybody on the next one tomorrow afternoon take care everybody